Okay, now we want to find an inverse algebraically. What we're working with here is f of x equals 2x minus 5. Now in the notes, I gave you a set of four different steps that you're going to go through in order to find the inverse. So let's go through all four of those steps with this example. Okay, so step number one, it says to change the f of x into a y. All right, y equals 2x minus 5. That's it. Done with that step. Number two says switch x and y. This is the most important part that you have to do. And the reason why we're switching is because if you looked at the graphs, if you look at two graphs of the original function and its inverse, you'll notice that the x and the y coordinate for the first graph is exactly switched from the inverse. So the x and y for each are switched. So that's why we got to do that when we do step number two here. We're going to switch x and y x equals 2y minus 5. Okay, done with that step. Number three is the step that requires the most amount of work and that's where you actually solve for y. Now that we've switched it, it's not solved for y anymore. So what we need to do is add 5 to both sides. So if I move the negative across the equal sign, it becomes positive. And I have x plus 5 equals 2y. Now I want, I want to get y by itself, which means I'm going to divide this part by 2, and I'm going to divide this side by 2. So when I get done dividing, I get x plus 5 over 2 equals y. Step number 4 of this process would be to change the y back into the inverse notation. So I have the inverse of x is going to equal x plus 5 over 2. Okay, so now I have my original one, and now I have my inverse. What I'm ready to do now is I need to verify the answer, so now I have to do the check for both sides to see if they are inverses. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. We have our um, original one right here, and we have the inverse. We have to show this check. We have to do this, put the inverse inside the original one, show that's equal to x, and then I have to do the same thing except I'm putting the inverse on the outside. So now I have these two that I have to do, and if I can show both sides are equal to x, then I verify that these are in fact inverses. Let's do this one first. I have f, I'm going to put in what I found for the inverse. I did this earlier, I got x plus 5 over 2. x plus 5 over 2. Now I should mention something about this. By the way, you could actually divide this by 2 and divide that by 2, and you could have two separate terms for that. I chose to actually keep this together as one fraction because you'll notice that when I put this into x here, it's going to make it easier to cancel that one out. So just FYI, that's why I decided to keep it in the fraction form instead of separating it into two individual fractions. So now when I do this one, I have the template from my original one is 2 times something, and then I have minus 5. Well, the x that would normally be here, I'm going to replace it with x plus 5 over 2. And then what happens is the 2 and this 2, those are both going to cancel. And I get x plus 5 minus 5. That cancel, the 5's are going to cancel and I get x. So now I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. I'm, my inverse is x plus 5 over 2. I'm putting inside of it 2x plus 5. So it's going to look like this. I want to put 2x minus 5 into the inverse. Here's the template. I have something plus 5. So I have a space plus 5. That's all divided by 2. In this space right here, I'm going to put 2x minus 5 in place of the original x that was there. What happens is the two 5's are going to cancel out, and I get 2x over 2, but then I can cancel out the 2's also, and I get x. So what I've done is I've just verified that the work that I did before by following those four steps and I got this, that is the correct inverse because I have verified their inverses because I get x on both sides. 